Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now if you haven't done so yet, then go ahead and hit that red subscribe button down below and make sure that you are clicking the bell icon as well so that you can get notified of any future videos that I publish on this channel. Now for today's topic, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to jump into PowerShell and talk about how you can use PowerShell to download and reassemble a streaming video file so that you can download them from different websites. So what we're going to be use, doing is using Twitter as an example where I publish some little short videos once in a while that promote some content that I'm producing for CBT Nuggets. And what we're going to do is to take those HTTP live streams or HLS streams video files and what we're going to do is download all of the segments of those files into a directory and then we're going to reassemble all of those back into a single video file. So this is particularly useful if you see a video online and the underlying technology that's being used is HTTP live streaming. Basically what you'll see is that when a video file is prepared for live streaming, basically what happens on the back end is a process will carve up that video file into very small segments. And those seg segments could range anywhere from two seconds to maybe 10 seconds or something like that, depending on how much data needs to be buffered. So HTTP live streaming is a really cool technology and we're just gonna use PowerShell to basically integrate with it and download the files locally. So let's jump over here into my desktop. And this is just a, a Wikipedia article on HTTP live streaming, which is kind of helpful if you are unfamiliar with how the technology works. Now what you'll notice is that typically a HTTP live stream will be kind of entry point into that live stream is a M3 U8 file. And basically, if you look a little bit further, there is actually a reference to the M3 U8 file further down. And basically, during distribution of an HTTP live stream, you've got this playlist file. So the M3 U8 file is what's called a playlist file. And then that file, basically, it's just a plain text file. It's nothing super complicated. And basically what it does is it points to all of these individual .ts files, which are the individual segments of the original video that was split up into smaller chunks. So the TS files are basically uh, individually encoded chunks of an overall video file. So what we're going to do is take a look at how to download the M308 playlist file and then basically expand the contents of that file and look for any references to these TS files. And then we're going to download the TS files locally and then we're going to recompile it into a single video file. So for my example here, I am on my Twitter account, twitter.com slash pcgeek86, and I just put together this little promotional video this morning, it's about two minutes long, so not super long here. And what we're gonna do is find out how to find the playlist URL, and then download all of the individual TS files from that. So the first thing you wanna do is fire up Google Chrome here, or Firefox if you prefer, and then if you hit Control shift i or F12, either one of those keyboard shortcuts should work. That'll open up the Chrome Dev Tools here. Now I'm just going to increase the font size here a little bit to make it a little bit more readable. So what I'm going to do is in the main window here, I'm going to hit Control shift r on the Network tab. And you want to make sure that it's recording here. So if it says, if it's not recording, make sure that you click on Record. And then I'm going to hit Control shift r and that'll force a full refresh of the page. Now what you'll notice here is that the requests going to this M3 U8 URL are basically responsible for retrieving that playlist file. And what's interesting is that if you kind of examine the structure of this URL, you've got video.twimage.com slash something slash video ID, and then eventually you get to, you got 480 by 270 here. So that indicates to me that it's a video resolution most likely. And if I click on, there's actually a second M3 U8 file here as well. And this one is actually 1280 by 720. So basically there are at least two different resolutions of encoding that are being done here. So basically the browser is going to determine, I guess, which, which one's best. I'm not really sure how all that stuff works internally. But basically 
right after we download these M3U8 files, you can see that it starts downloading these .ts files. And what's interesting here is that it, it starts by downloading the lower resolution stream first, and then it follows that up by downloading a .ts file from that low resolution stream. And you can tell it's the low resolution stream just because of the dimensions of the video that are hard coded into the URL here, or not hard coded, but, but uh, dynamically inserted there. And then on this, and then what happens immediately following that, if you're on a fast enough internet connection, I presume, is that the browser says, oh, well, I guess I can actually afford to use this higher resolution stream because I have enough bandwidth. And so what it does is it downloads that playlist and then it starts downloading these 1280 by 720 TS files right away. So basically, our PowerShell script that we're going to write is going to read this M3U8 file, and then it's going to download all of these TS segments just like a browser would as it progressively plays it back. So what I'm going to do is switch over to Microsoft Visual Studio Code here, my preferred editor of choice, and also I've got the PowerShell extension installed, which gives you some nice language features like syntax highlighting and IntelliSense and the ability to hit F5 to invoke your script and whatever else. So for starters, I'm just going to define a variable that contains a path to the M3U8 file. Of course, I could probably do some automation to actually discover what the M3U8 URL is based on maybe a tweet link or something. You could you know, inspect the HTML that comes back from the server and perhaps find out what that playlist URL is. But for the time being, that's not really the focus of this video. So we're just going to hard code that for now as our example. And then what we want to do is to download this file locally. So I'm going to run invoke web request dash URI URL followed by dash out file. And then we'll just call this uh, playlist.m3u8. So that's going to download the file locally here. I'm also going to do progress. Actually, let me set progress preference equal to off, I think. Or it might be none. Oh, actually, I need to do uh, continue here. And now if I hit F5, you can see that we just download this file locally. If I do ls playlist.m3u8, sure enough, there is the file. So if I do cat playlist.m3u8, now we actually have the entire file here. Now, keep in mind that anything that starts with a hashtag here is not actually part of the data, the underlying video data. So what we care about ultimately here are these individual URLs. And all these URLs are relative URLs based on the host that we retrieved the M3U8 file from. So in this case, it's going to be video.twimage.com slash whatever this URL is here. So what now what I need to do is to basically read that playlist file. So I'll do get content dash path playlist.m3u8 and assign that to a variable like playlist. And let's go ahead and hit F8 to run that. So now we've got this playlist variable and the get content command actually splits it based on the line breaks. So we have 89 lines inside of this file. So now what I'll do is do dollar playlist and then say for each. So basically for each line inside of this playlist file, I'll say if the item, or sorry, dollar $PS item, so if the current item in the pipeline matches a particular regular expression, so I'll say start of line followed by a hashtag, actually I'm going to do not match, so basically if it does not match a hashtag, then do something, and that something is we're going to assemble a URL starting with this prefix here. I'll just do something like dollar prefix equals video.toimage.com with the HTTPS on it. And then what we're going to do is basically just write host dash object, and we're going to concatenate prefix plus the PS item, the current line. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to go through this m 3 8 file, and it should only print out the lines that have a URL part on them, and it's going to prefix it with the prefix that I defined up here. So what I'm going to do now is just comment out this line here, and we'll hit F5 to run this. And sure enough, I get back a list of URIs here. 
and they should be in the correct order here. So what I'm going to do now, and you can actually see something else I wanted to kind of call out here, is that inside of the URL, you actually have the milliseconds in the URL for each segment. So you can actually see that this is the first segment up here because it starts at millisecond zero and it ends at millisecond 3000. And then the next segment picks up at 3000, goes to 6000. So each of these PS files is representative of a three second period of time. And then very at the very end, the last file, because it's not gonna be an exact, uh, exactly divisible by three seconds, because the video could have maybe 1.2 seconds at the end. At the very end, you can see we've got 120,000 milliseconds up to 124,000. So the last one is actually, it looks like 4.1 seconds. So it's actually a little bit longer than the other uh, segments that are all three seconds long. All right, so now with that out of the way, now that we've got all these URLs, what we can do is to download them. However, we wanna make sure that when we download them, that we are also storing a path to the file as well. And what, the reason we wanna do that is because we're gonna be using FFmpeg to reassemble all of these individual TS segments into a final video file. And FFmpeg has a concatenate function where basically you create a text file. So we could call it mylist.txt, for example. And then that's going to contain paths to all of these individual files in the correct order. So we need to make sure that as we download these segments, that they're being downloaded in the correct order and that we're storing references to each of those inside of this uh, text file that is, is ultimately going to be read by FFmpeg. All right, so back here, let's go ahead and run invoke web request. So instead of just printing out the URL, we actually want to download each of these segments, right? So I'm gonna do invoke web request dash URI. Uh, I'll call this segment URI and set the value of that to prefix plus PS item. And then we're going to download segment URI. And then the target file name. I'm actually just going to preserve, I think, the original file names here. So what I'm going to do is basically take the entire URL and then split it on a forward slash and then grab the last array element. So when I split on a forward slash, it's going to give me an array and I want to grab the last array element and that'll be my, my file name. So let's do segment, let's do segment file name equals segment URI dot uh, split on a forward slash, and then we'll grab the last array element. And the way that you can grab the last array element, you don't necessarily know what the length of an array is. Of course, there is a length property on arrays. However, if you just want to grab the last element, PowerShell allows you to grab index negative one. And so if you think about an array that starts at index zero, if you go from zero at the very beginning of the array to negative one, that actually will give you the last array element. So now what we're going to do is say out file. Uh, and then I'm, I've created a directory here called C slash WSH. And we're going to do segment file name there. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out the invoke web, web request command for now. And I'm just going to print out segment URI to write host, followed by write host segment file name. So basically it's going to print out the URL followed by the file name. And sure enough, that looks okay. And so now what I can do is uncomment invoke web request. And I'm actually going to save this script file over to the cposh directory as well. So now I've saved the script to the cposh directory. And what I'm going to do is comment out the write host commands. We don't need that. And then I think I'm ready to just hit F5. And I should be good to go, I think. The only thing is that I don't have a path to this. So I'm going to do actually $PS script root slash playlist. I'm going to do the same thing. Up. I should assign that to a variable, but I'm just being lazy here. So bear with me. So I'm going to download to PS script root slash playlist.m3u8. And PS script root refers to the current directory where the PowerShell script resides, so that's going to resolve to C slash PWSH. 
All right, let's hit F5. I think we're ready to go here. So it looks like my progress preference is not actually being honored here because it's spitting out all this progress data that I don't really care about. But in just a moment here, we should have all of these segments downloaded. Awesome. So that didn't take too long. So now I'm going to do a CD slash PWSH. And then I'll just do a quick LS here. And sure enough, these are all of our files. So we've got all the TS files here. We've got playlist.m3u8, which once we've downloaded all the segments, we actually don't really need that anymore. And then we've got script.ps1 here. So all I need are basically references to all these TS files. And the one thing that we haven't done yet is actually created that little text file where we are going to assemble the paths to those files together. So what I'm going to do is say add content path, yes, script root, slash, let's say file list.txt. And then the value that we're going to add, again, this comes from the FFmpeg documentation here. Um, so basically it's going to be file followed by single quoted path. And this can be a relative path or it can be an absolute path. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and use absolute pathing. And if you do use absolute paths, you have to use this safe zero parameter. Not entirely sure why that is, but that's what the documentation says. So we will go ahead and just follow that. So I'll do add content path. And then basically the template here is going to be file followed by a single quote, which I'll escape using a single quote. So basically if you want a single quote inside of a single quoted string, you actually have to put two single quotes there. And then what I'll do is I'll use .NET string formatting to inject the file name. I'll actually just do dash F segment file name. I think I actually am going to use relative paths. Sorry for the switch there. But I'm going to just use the relative path, which is going to be the, uh, just the file name. So that's not going to include the prefix here. That to PS script root, just that we're maintaining the same directory throughout the whole script. And so at this point, I would basically need to rerun the command here to download all the files. So I'm going to comment that out so that we don't have to re-download all the files. I'll hit F5, and that should just generate my file list.txt. So now I'll do cat file list.txt. And now it looks like we have everything that we need here. So we've got file 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, etc. So that's our entire file list that we're going to use with FFmpeg. Now, if you don't have FFmpeg, I recommend installing it using the Scoop Package Manager. There's also a preview version of a package manager from Microsoft called Winget that's available. Um, it's not really done yet, so I would probably say just stick with Scoop for now. But you can do just Scoop install FFmpeg, and that will make sure that it's installed and up to date for you. So once you install FFmpeg, at the very end here, what we need to do is basically run FFmpeg, followed by dash F concat, safe zero, dash I is going to point to the file that we created here, which is file list.txt. The codec is going to be copy because we're not going to re-encode. We're just going to copy the existing encoded stream. And then finally, we have output dot mp4. So hopefully this works. Uh, let's go ahead and do, I'm going to comment this out as well because we don't want to manipulate that file. I'm just going to go ahead and hit F5 here and hopefully everything went okay here. So now I'll do ls star mp4. We've got this output.mp4. It looks like it's 9.1 megabytes. So quite a bit smaller than the 200 some megabyte file that I uploaded, but that's okay. They did some good compression, I guess, on it. And now I'll just run VLC output.mp4 and check it out. We have an entire video file here. So we've got two minutes and four seconds. The whole video file is a single file. We didn't have to go through any re-encoding processes because the file's already encoded. It's just been split into smaller ES files. So that's pretty much everything there is to using PowerShell to find a playlist file download all the TS files, and then kind of reassemble it. So I hope this has been helpful for you, and we will see you in the next video. Take care.